Well, you uh, found me back out here in the garage today. I, um, it's time to rotate the tires on the car. Uh, Carfax keeps sending me an email. Mr. Schuf, it's time to rotate the tires on your Genesis. So it's my day off today and I thought, well, I could procrastinate. Procrastination is easy when it's hot out in the garage. You gotta be down here on the floor jacking up the car and uh, fighting with the lug nuts and getting everything just right. But I thought, okay, no more procrastination. Time to get to work. Um, and I suppose what's, what's propelled me forward here is uh, as Scott and I are taking you through the book of Proverbs, I'm going to bring you to chapter 10 of Proverbs about the uh, problem of procrastination. And I'm going to be sort of open with you about some of the, um, some of the causes of procrastination, some of my own. And then I want to provide some cures, obviously. And if you'd like to work with me on this, if you took a piece of uh, a, a piece of white paper, and uh, why don't you write down on that paper your best, your top, your best excuses for procrastinating? I'm going to give you four on Sunday. I'm sure there's dozens more, and you might even come up with some really creative ones. I would just be dying to know what your best excuses are for procrastinating. Um, and then I want to provide you with a cure. I'm going to be giving some, um, some points to pulverize procrastination. But as with everything, our mission at Marco is to bring hope to people with the truth of Jesus. And I really believe that. I honestly believe that. Because even with procrastination and the sins that often result because we procrastinate, I want to tell you about somebody that never procrastinated. He never, ever procrastinated. And as a result, we have a savior. If he had procrastinated, we wouldn't have a savior. So uh, maybe think back on your life. You know, as you and I get, get a couple of decades under the belt, we look back and we think, wow, uh, many, many things we did, but we've, we procrastinated and often we procrastinate on the essentials and uh, leave those behind and get on with other things that are really, quite frankly, not as valuable or important. And we need to confess that and get that sorted out. So uh, yeah, if you'd be willing uh, to do what I've been doing, make a list of your, your top four excuses for procrastinating. Put them on a sheet of paper, maybe even bring them with you, if you're going to be online with us Sunday, have them in your Bible and uh, you're going to be able to follow along. You're going to get more out of the sermon on Sunday. If, if you've got uh, that list or if you're if you're coming out to a live church, bring that piece of paper, stick it in your Bible and and come along to church. And uh, I'm really going to be interested to see what you've learned. And I'll share with you what I've learned from God's word. Chapter 10 of Proverbs. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm not procrastinating anymore. I'm, I'm into this. I'm rotating all four tires on this uh, Genesis. <clears throat> and then I will not get any more reminders from Carfax. So uh, may God bless you and care for you through these times. Uh, here at Marco, we love you. Uh, we pray for you Wednesday nights. The prayer team has just been wonderful. We had such a wonderful night last night praying for people in our church. We pray for everybody we can think of. And uh, just, just know that you're loved and cared for, and I hope you're going to be all right today.